Hey guys, the charity fundraiser is still going strong. And I've got to say, I've really been appreciating the comments I've gotten. Honestly, I'm not trying to make this about myself, but I like the fact I can make an impact on people. I didn't realize this many people had it when I first got diagnosed, and I wanted to help other people like me. If you think you or someone you know has PMDD or any other premenstrual disorder, please get help. Trust me, you'll feel so much better to put a name to the problem. Speaking of, just want to get this out of the way now, I will be signing prints on Streamily, and my live stream for May 11th closes on May 4th. And in convention news, I will be at Level Up Expo, doing two panels, and the week after at Fan Expo Philly. I just want to get it out of the way, I'm not trying to promote myself along with that, I just, I feel like it might be easier, I'm sorry. Donate today! And remember, you are loved, you are wanted, and you got this. Now on with the video! I don't know, Stan. I think what she needs right now is our love and support. Shoot her! Shoot her in the face! Repeat after me. Ew! Quagmire, take it from here. Ew! Thank you, Glenn. Okay, we got it all out. Time to review! Hi, I'm Kitty Monk and I'm here to talk to you about American Dead. Or more specifically, Haley Smith. Haley Dream Smasher Smith. Oh, I know. You have no idea how long it's taken me to write a review on this girl. Sorry if it had to be like this. I'm sorry if I wrote like a million Roger videos, half a million Steve videos, three times as many Francine videos, and one on Stan, and another on Jeff, and one on Barry. I don't know why, I'm guessing either they were just more interesting, or I just found more to talk about, especially with Roger. Haley, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. Now, American Dead is a show that, at its core, is all about a man trying to connect with his family, especially his children. The problem is, they can never really live up to his ideals and expectations, and ironically, they almost just make it. But something always holds them back, like Steve is easily swayed to Stan's way of conservatism early on, mostly because he wants his father's respect and he swings around like a pendulum. But he is still easily swayed, which for a conservative like Stan is perfect. The problem is, he's a huge nerd and a creepy loser, meaning he can't be the strong jock his father wants him to be. But I've talked about him plenty of times. Then there's Haley. Sweet, sweet Haley. I don't mean that in a weird way. Haley, in many ways, is Stan's heir. She's Stan with boobies. She's as stubborn as her father, headstrong as her father, and in many ways, she's a giant hypocrite who often changes her political viewpoints on a whim if it suits her. You know, like her father. She would be the best conservative, especially because she loves activism. I mean, remember when she became all for guns? The problem is, she's a pro-choice feminist liberal. Heh, <laughs> I guess this show is big on the horseshoe fairy. I wrote about doing one big video on Stan and Haley and why they fight, and I might one day, but I think it's better to simply pick a snapshot episode to show you my point. There were a few episodes I could choose from to discuss their dynamic, and I chose Pulling Double Booty, where Haley boinks a guy who looks exactly like her father, but isn't her father, and then almost sleeps with her own father without realizing it's her own father. Wow, and I thought Oedipus Rex had problems. So, let's discuss. One afternoon, Stan is at home looking for a snack. You should try some rice cakes. I've been eating those lately. They are so good, even though they feel like styrofoam. No, Stan does not want to take my advice and decides on some leftover cookies. Cookie dough. Stan, have you been eating the cookie dough again? Why, is there still some on my face? No. Then no. Why is Francine upset? I thought people ate cookie dough. Patchy the Pirate does, and they put cookie dough in ice cream. Fun fact, when I was like seven, I ate some leftover cake batter, like with raw egg and everything. I woke up in the middle of the night and I threw up like crazy. And funny thing is, I did not mean to sneak eat it. I was baking a cake with my mom because I was staying at her house that weekend. And I was like, hey, can I have the leftovers? And she was like, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I just, sometimes it's fun to review episodes because they remind me of 
moments from my youth. Francine scolds him because, unlike me, Stan probably couldn't fit into his mother's t-shirt. When I was little, they were old enough to be nightgowns. Don't worry, this'll all be important later. Except the puking part, again, I just like to make myself more relatable to the audience by adding stories of my personal life. I'm not trying to do filler, I just, I want to appeal to you guys. I, I'm hoping it applies here. Haley and Jeff enter on cue, on their way to a business trip to the mall. For Jeff, not for Haley. It's a business trip. I'm gonna buy some beads at the bead store and then open up my own bead store. Ooh, good thinking. You can count the whole trip is tax deductible. Be sure you stop by the food court and then it'll really count when you do your taxes. Before she leaves, Haley tells her parents she loves them. But while Francine returns the affection and the sentiment, Stan does not respond. Bye, Dad. Love you. Okay. I mean, I can get the nut hugging, affection makes my skin sting like a wasp, but not saying I love you to your own flesh and blood? Actually, she might not be his daughter, I don't care. What a jerk. So as you can guess, Stan and Haley have a difficult relationship. Part of it is because they're on opposite sides of the political spectrum, but I think it's deeper than that. Stan has a rugged idea of what manhood is, probably more so than Hank Hill. Just saying, in many ways, I find Stan to be Hank on steroids and Mr. Pibb. And to a guy like Stan, part of that manhood is that you don't show affection ever. Whereas King of the Hill explained it away as Hank had abusive parents who put him down whenever he showed emotion, with Stan, it relates to his training as a CIA agent. When Stan was grieving, when Roger supposedly died back in season one, and he saw a CIA-approved therapist, we find out it was so difficult for him to act sad because the CIA drilled it into him that showing emotion makes you a woman. Don't you have any feelings? Son, feelings are what women have. They come from their ovaries. Yes, from our ovaries. That's why PMDD happens and why one of the only cures is to have your ovaries removed. Thereby meaning for some people, you have to choose to either have children or not get unalivedly depressed three weeks out of the month. Donate today. Plus, American Dad is more so a show about a conservative learning a lesson, rather than King of the Hill, where it's a bunch of conservatives reacting to a progressive world that they were raised unprepared for. But besides brief moments, Stan often puts up a wall around him. And unfortunately, Haley is part of that wall. Because they're opposites, it just makes that wall worse and worse. When Haley is out of the room, Francine scolds him for not telling Haley he loves her. Why can't you ever say I love you? Well, I mean, you might eventually get your wish, Franny. Stan instead has his own idea of affection. Say she gets cancer, right? And doctors can't cure it. She hears I love you from her dad for the first time, and then BAM! She dies happy. Did your grandfather with the crap land and the 20 grand do that to you, Stan? Wow, that really rhymed. Cause I could totally see that. At the CIA, they're having a meeting where Bullock expositions to the agents, and also the audience, the purpose of CIA body doubles. They're meant to be for work purposes, not for personal reasons. Using your double to finish making love to a JetBlue stewardess because you were too drunk is a definite no-no. Once again, this will be important later, but for now, just know that the CIA often employs body doubles in the show and in real life. Apparently, I don't know how true this is, this was just what I was able to find, but they're apparently called political decoys because their purpose is to draw attention away from somebody important, usually major political figures. Like, if the president's coming to town, they might have, like, another guy who looks like him somewhere else to draw attention away from him. Oftentimes, to accomplish this, they'll receive plastic surgery, which is how I think the show could hand wave why the decoys look like clones. But yes, this is something the show did not make up, I don't think. Actually, fun fact, apparently in the 1950s, the CIA schemed to have Indonesia's first president, I might be butchering this, Sukarno, ousted by having a body double portray him in a porno film they made with a blonde woman made up to look like a Soviet agent. But when they showed him the footage, he thought it was hilarious and he actually wanted copies. So the blackmail, and therefore the plan, did not work. Maybe actual agents have decoys, especially if their lives are threatened, in which case I feel like they probably would just move them. But to my knowledge, it's only really major political figures like presidents and lawmakers. So 
So yeah, it's a cool idea. I'm not dissing the show. And it's nice to know that the idea might have come from somewhere in real life. History lesson aside, the show used body doubles before in It's Good to Be the Queen, when Stan learned that Francine technically never became prom queen. So his dream of marrying a prom queen and showing up to everybody at his own prom never came true, and he wanted to go to Francine's reunion, not his own, with the quote-unquote real prom queen, who, since she lost the competition, has long since lost her looks, while allowing his body double, Bill, to take Francine out to dinner instead, to disastrous results. Unfortunately, she didn't realize that her tampon had been in for two days, which led to a mild case of toxic shock. At 2243, she was rushed to the hospital by- uh, Okay. See you at dessert. I want to make a joke about tampons and PMDD, but I actually don't know any. The most I found was for some people, it makes cramps worse, but I don't know, some said it was a myth, some said it wasn't, and I don't want to spread any misinformation. I guess then, question to my viewers out there capable of getting periods. Were you ever told you weren't allowed to use tampons? Because we were. Because it would mean we would lose our virginity to the point where in PE we had a whole section where the gym teacher had to literally say, no, you will not lose your virginity. Did you blab? Why did you tell people? Come on, it was my first sloppy seconds. You know, no disrespect to the episode, but I kind of wish the Sanders body double came back. See, after his voice actor, Mike Barker, also one of the co-creators, left American Dead, they wrote off all of his characters. And in Sanders' case, they said he died on a mission. He and his wife, Bunny, had no safety net, so she was forced to work a menial job. Hence, Francine learning a widow is not just endless perks. Most of the time, it actually sucks. Couldn't they do that in the episode, like, Sanders' wife is super upset, and then Sanders returns, but he has a new voice. And it turns out Francine asked the CIA to allow his body double to take his place. Just saying, the real duper died in 100 AD. In the next episode, it became a huge plot point that his clone took over his life. I'm sure they could have done that, too. The lesson is cut short as Francine has to call to tell Stan that Jeff and Haley broke up, which... What's the big whoop? They've broken up plenty of times prior to this. Dungeons and Wagons, Halius. You don't understand. This time he broke up with her. Will slap a bow on me and call me Mickey Mouse. Stuff's about to hit the fan. As it turns out, it's awful when Haley gets broken up with and she doesn't know how to deal with their rejection and freaks out like crazy. For reasons. Makes me wonder if the breakup just came out of nowhere. Or if deep down Jeff knew she was going to be emotional but was expecting like at most tears or some yelling. So he took her to the mall, i.e. a public place, hoping she wouldn't make a scene. I mean, he kinda says, Why the hell did you break up with Haley? I don't know. It wasn't just one thing, Mr. S. It was like, two things. Yeah, if he thought that Jeff was in the wrong show. I mean, his own mother ran away before he was born. Maybe if he had some habit wine on him, Haley would calm down. But this is the last we see of Jeff in the episode. Not complaining, just putting it out there. But why'd she go so crazy? Whenever she gets dumped, she completely wigs out. Okay, two things. First off, the hypocrisy. I don't like that. Not a flaw against the episode, I just feel a need to point it out. She really is Dan's daughter. Like, it's one thing to be a little upset, but to do all of that? Just saying, I still remember Dungeons and Wagons, where she got mad that Jeff was paying more attention to Steve, so yeah. Second, I kind of wonder where this comes from. The rage, not the hypocrisy. I already explained the hypocrisy. My idea was originally it was genetic. As we saw in Francine's flashback, Francine freaks out if she feels rejected. Like when Stan forgot their anniversary and it caused such a domestic disturbance that it ended up on the show Cops. Okay, okay, I'm cool. <laughs> oh yeah, this is my favorite part. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. <laughs> Plus, remember when he committed Francine to the nut house and then Francine had a mental breakdown? And to another degree, I could see Stan reacting the same way. But part of me wonders if this is subconscious. In Halius and Stan Knows Best, we learn that Stan brainwashed his children into becoming secret agents. How 
However, whereas Steve got off easy, as he was programmed to kill Walter Mondale, who surprisingly was alive until 2021, good for him, Stan wanted him and Haley to have father-daughter spy adventures, and therefore subjected her to Project Daycare, which was meant to turn her into the ultimate killing machine, with Stan as her handler. However, the memories are locked away in her subconscious, only present in dreams of a creepy classroom. So it makes me wonder if since Stan never really did away with the programming, perhaps Haley becomes violent as a side effect. A boyfriend, in some sense, might be a kind of handler, because they can help or guide you, like a friend. Not like, I'm gonna submit to you and make babies. They're just somebody who helps to keep you in check. But hey, it's just a theory. I mean, remember when she went through puberty and burned down the living room because Roger made fun of her zit? Anything is possible. In universe, Dan says that Haley has always freaked out when she gets dumped. Even in kindergarten when her crush rejected her in favor of a new girl. And she raged so hard that she somehow managed to get a hamster pregnant. The autopsy show the hamster was pregnant. Somehow, maybe it was like that before. But why am I busy talking? While I was giving commentary, Haley was destroying the bejesus out of a toy store full of toys. Like something out of King Kong. <laughs> How come we're doing this? Why? Aren't you having fun? Eh, maybe it'll tire her out. That's my best guess. Wanting to move to the next scene, Stan shoots Haley with a dart. <laughs> Damn, Haley, how much do you weigh? Wait, is that how many it would take to bring me down? Then again, apparently drinks take a couple of minutes to kick in, so maybe stuff just happens. Since Stan prefers guns, I could totally see him not knowing how darts work. I don't even know how they work. I had to Google them. Stan takes Haley home and tells Francine the conflict of the episode. The police went easy on her this time, but if she goes on another rampage, they'll throw her in jail. The police said if Haley goes on another rampage, they'll throw her in jail. Not prison. That seems like more secure. Francine doesn't think Haley would survive in jail. I know I wouldn't. I'm weak. And tells a story that kind of implies Franny might have done some time herself. If I had to guess, probably for killing her college roommate. And then they really get in there. And my baby's all, oh, you bitch, I'll kill you. Story time again. So one reason I review the Seth MacFarlane shows is I've watched them since middle school. And during that time, I lived with my grandmother. And she was not a huge fan of Seth MacFarlane or his shows or me watching them because he made fun of Christians. That's part of why my philosophy is that a kid can watch most adult shows, provided they don't repeat what they hear or try to imitate them. Just saying, they're gonna find ways to get around to it anyways. So one day I was watching a rerun of this episode and I got to the part where Francine was like, you, I'll kill you. And at that moment, my grandma walked in and looked me dead in the eye and without even saying a word, I just changed the channel and that was it. Again, I'm sorry, I just, this episode is bringing back a lot of memories. Francine says that while Haley probably won't survive jail or prison, it's almost inevitable that she'll be arrested because she has horrible taste in men and therefore will likely get her heart broken again. You break up my heart, Haley. You break up my heart and my spaghetti. Which, rather than taking Haley to a therapist to find out why she overreacts or teaching her not to do that or that she's a hypocrite or, I don't know, using chemicals like putting it in her soda or something, Stan decides that she can't date anybody he does not sign off on. Patriarchal much? Shouldn't you consult your wife for this crap? She knows Haley better than you. Elsewhere, Steve and Roger are going on a summer of exotic adventure where they travel around and look at stuff. In their first stop, is Chinatown, which I'm guessing is in DC. There actually is one in DC. I think it's near where they hold AwesomeCon. Ah, Chinatown. Where you could tell me it was Japan Town or Korea Town, and I'd nod and smile. To be fair, Roger, I think they actually have one of those in Midtown. Like, I know the Empire State Building and Penn Station are there. I'm not sure about Japan Town. 
Well, actually, apparently there are a few, especially in California and Honolulu. Hey, that rhymes. On the street, Steve sees a man selling chicks, as in baby chickens. He's not a human trafficker like Steve was with that dude in Saudi Arabia. And Steve correctly guesses it's a female without even trying. How you know it, female chick? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, well, it, it just looks like one. You're right. Wait, how does he know? Wait, is there really a method? Um, uh, apparently there is, but it involves squeezing the private parts of the baby chick. And apparently factory farm chicks, which I'm guessing those are, don't always have that takeaway. And you can actually damage the chick by doing that. So I'm just going to say Steve has intuition because I don't want to think of the alternative. Steve is offered a summer job at a chicken hatchery as a chicken checker which Roger reluctantly agrees to so he can hang out with Steve. What about our summer of exotic adventure? We'll do it together. And just like that, I'm working for the Chinese again. Wait, OMG, this is a subplot. Of course, Steve has to invade a video that's supposed to have nothing to do with him. I mean, I can expect Roger, but Steve. But wait, this is Steve's first summer job, or first job overall, and it involves working at a factory? <gasps> Same see Steve. I rolled umbrellas for a summer. Hopefully you'll learn another language like I kind of did. But don't be a bad bunny or they're going to throw your ass into a furnace. Two weeks later, Haley has started to put herself out there and has a meet cute with a barista who is voiced by Josh Gad. I'm not even joking. Look it up. Remember, he did stuff before Frozen in the Book of Mormon. How about them digits? 757. And fun fact, the phone number Haley gives for the real-life Langley Air Force Base. Unfortunately, Stan acts like a literal helicopter parent and airlifts Josh Gad barista the heck out of there. Why? because Book of Mormon commands him. No, actually, it's because the dude doesn't meet his qualifications. I'm not gonna let you date another loser who's gonna break up with you. And this guy's a loser. Weak chin, small hands. He'll dump you in a week. This comes back later, BTW. But aren't you gonna have like a hundred page itinerary like Jim Bob Duggar? Now, I agree Stan has a right to worry, but I feel at the same time they could find out why Haley overreacts and why she tends to go for losers, or losers by Stan's definition. Does she date them on purpose to spite Stan, or does she just have a type? Plus, he's in the CIA, couldn't he just run a background check on the guy she wants to date? Elsewhere, Roger is hating his job, which honestly I understand. Those jobs suck if they don't let you listen to music or audiobooks. It's a very turn your brain off type of job. This summer isn't exotic, it sucks! There's nothing here. No wiener, no wedge, just feathers and chicken skin. You should know, Roger. You should know. Steve asks the manager where the chicks go when they're sorted and why they're being sorted. Female go to farm, lay eggs. Male get cold. Which Steve apparently mishears as called because he sees them as performers, not being released to elsewhere. So glamorous. Bye bye, little guy. I'm guessing Stan airlifted another dude because Haley is pissed off. She goes to the CIA and tells Stan, Stay the hell out of my love life! And we transition to the next scene. Francine tells Stan not to airlift men out of Haley's life. Yes, Dan, pay them off to never speak to Haley again, like a proper father. And part of the problem is that Stan has impossibly high, picky standards that no possible son-in-law can hope to reach. Or, hey, maybe a couple might, but they're not the type of guys for Haley. Meaning, Haley's gonna end up single or in jail. Look, Francine, I'm just trying to find her someone reliable, someone good. Someone... Someone like me! Stan is the father-in-law equivalent of that one kid who goes to a fancy restaurant and orders chicken fingers. You know what? I would probably do that too. Stan leaves to go feed Klaus. <gasps> Stan, no! Klaus is having a blood test in the morning! He's not supposed to eat for 12 hours! No joke, I think about this scene every time I get a blood test. Francine goes to stop Stan and she comes upon a ghastly sight in Haley's room because Haley doesn't have the common sense to close the door. Stan, not even the Targaryens would do that. Or the McBoyles. You are upsetting incest people everywhere, along with normal people. Honey, you are a great kisser. 
Don't talk like that, Bill. It's creepy. Shucks, I'm just kidding around. That's why I'm the best damn body double at the CIA. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not really Stan. That's worse. As it turns out, Stan is actually Bill, Stan's body double who Haley has made a genuine connection with and started dating. Ew! In truth, Stan was off eating the cookie dough in front of Klaus, who can't eat because of his blood test. I always find it. Do I pause? Yeah, he's gonna sit down. Well, Klaus is right, he really just likes to hear himself talk. But it is cute to see Roger and Klaus hanging out together, like brothers. I can't believe we haven't done that before. And the crazy thing is, it didn't feel weird. It's like we got matched for a reason. Oh uh, yeah, there's that other kissy face episode I need to talk about one day. Ew! Francine goes to attack Stan for supposedly sucking face with his daughter. Oh, come on, you're overreacting. Roger does it too. Yeah, I've stuck my fingers in there. Uh, that's gross! You knew her since she was a little girl. Jailbait much? Actually, Kitty, he means the cookie dough. That's gross too, Catherine. You put it in a bowl or scrape a little off. It's like the rules for chips. You don't double dip. Hey, that rhymes. You know, I wonder if Roger knew Bill was in the house. I kind of want to see his reaction to this. Haley hears the commotion from downstairs and comes to tell them that she's not really dating Stan, but his body double. Hi, Stan. Francine. Hmm? Wait, so that was Bill upstairs? Oh, you were just making out with a man who looks exactly like your father. Wow, that makes it a whole slightly better, kinda. Speaking of, this kinda reminds me of another episode about getting kissy face with your parents called Edible Panties. One of my favorite episodes, actually. As we learn in that episode, Stan was parentified to the max by his mother, and part of that involved being her emotional center, like Bath time. His mother needs a pair of strong hands to help her in and out of the tub. And his behavior managed to gross out even Roger. So hey, that's another way Haley is like her daddy. Haley explains that they ran into each other at the CIA and they found out they had a lot in common. We went on a few dates and now I don't even see the resemblance to dad anymore. Probably because he had a fudge load of plastic surgery to make himself look like Stan. OMG, can you imagine how much time and money it probably took to reconstruct that chin? While Francine is grossed out, Stan loves it because he is a narcissist who Freud would have a field day with. Fantastic! Why didn't I think of Bill in the first place? He's a perfect specimen for her. Look at his powerful, devoted shoulders, his strong, reliable chin. Show, please free me from this torment. At the chicken factory, Steve learns that the male chicks do not get top hats. They get released to elsewhere as chicken nuggets, and they don't even get to wear hats after that. Come on, boys, we're getting you out of here. Ha, you thought they got top hats. But enough distraction. Bill and Haley have been dating for about a month and they go on a beach date with Francine and Stan, and the incense does not get any better. Francine tries to gently inquire if Haley is madly in love with Bill, which unfortunately she really is. No, I think I'd go maximum crazy. I'd murder Bill, burn down the neighborhood, rape Roger, Haley! You know, I hate to say it, actually, because, like, I, I just hate to say it, you guys know how I am. I think he would actually like that. <laughs> but again, why would you go crazy? That's why I wish they at least did a character study. Because at the end, they do kind of imply it has something to do with Stan's lack of love. Maybe make it a bigger deal. Like, Haley dated Bill because he looks like Stan. <coughs> Or, hey, maybe she doesn't notice the resemblance. In the ocean, Bill and Stan are talking, and they start chatting about Haley and her looks. Look at Haley, Stan. She's the greatest. Real pretty, too. Eh, she's all right. Ew! Honestly, yeah, I do think Haley is a pretty attractive woman. I don't mean that in a weird way, it's just she strikes me as one of those people who doesn't really put any thought into her parents. But Stan makes a counterpoint that Francine is hotter, and he's not wrong. Which gives Bill ideas. I'm guessing maybe the next day, Stan shows up and tries to sleep with Francine while she's making dinner. Meatloaf. Shallow and pedantic meatloaf with shallow gravy. <laughs> Wait! I gotta put the meatloaf in the oven first. You go upstairs. Only Stan comes home and he wouldn't want to stop Francine from making meatloaf on meatloaf night, meaning it was Bill. No, it wasn't. Oops, sorry, wrong Bill. It was Bill. All right, baby, hop in and... Hey, 
there he is. How's it going, big guy? You know that's rape, right? I mean, it depends on the jurisdiction, but it's considered rape by fraud or deceit in some cases. You're like Barney Stinson, even if I find him super hilarious. Well, when you were talking about how hot your wife was, I realized you were right. So I decided to nail her before I nailed your daughter. Stan tells Bill to put an egg in his shoe and beat it, which is difficult because he's not currently wearing shoes or much of anything. Bill gets thrown out of the house and fired, presumably. <gasps> does that mean he gets his real face back? But what it does mean is that, in a way, he broke up with Haley. Are you crazy? If you tell Haley that the love of her life tried to sleep with her mother, she'll go on a rampage and they'll lock her up. Even if he just cheated, OMG, imagine if Haley found out Bill cheated. Would she rampage in that case, or only rampage against him, not against everybody else like she did with Jeff? Or would she not care because he technically did not break up with her, and maybe her self-respect is that low? Her parents decide to keep it a secret, which I don't think she should do. She has a right to know. But unfortunately, I understand why. Then we'll just tell her he left. No, because then she'll think he dumped her and- Go on a rampage. Granted, couldn't you just say he died? Like Bullock said at the beginning, body doubles are meant for missions. Couldn't you just say that he got sent to the wrong country and he got blown up or shot or something? Seriously, Stan, just lie. Do you think he's not coming? No! no! You better hope Bill shows up. You don't even know. Why isn't he here? Haley gets violent in a foreshadowing kind of way, perhaps out of spite, but to keep up appearances, Stan decides to pretend to be Bill. Bill! Well, stuck in traffic. Sorry, honeysuckle. Ready to go? Bill! Oh, I'm so glad you're here. I'll go get my bag. Yeah. I didn't mean lie like that. I meant just like a white lie. Like, Haley, I love your shirt. Also, your boyfriend died. This is around the same time when they're going on a romantic trip into the woods. The woods where you hide bodies. But I gotta say, good on you, Stan. That is a very good impression. Ooh, can you do any others? Watch, I also do a good Roger. I like wine. There you go, I definitely hear it. Stan's plan is to pretend to be Bill and act like a jerk. That way, Haley will feel so upset that she'll break up with him, and they won't have to deal with this, even if there's a huge chance the real Bill could come back. However, as it turns out, this might not be so simple. First off, the purpose of their trip was to bone, as Bill had yet to break the seal. And as we all know, Haley takes after her mother. Have f fun, you two! Don't worry, we will. Cause we're finally going all the way. Second, at the hotel, we learn that Haley either has low self-esteem or she's as illiterate as a six-month-old baby because she cannot read signs. Like when he forces Haley to carry the bags. I bet you want to break up with me. No way. I'm not into gender stereotypes and I love being treated as an equal. Wait, but I thought carrying the bags was woman's work because Cotton made Dee Dee do it in King of the Hill, even if it was gonna rupture her uterus when she was knocked up. But why care about that stuff? Back to the subplot. Steve stole a few chickens from the hatchery and spent the summer raising them in the shed. And they really grew, like ballooned up, like holy crap. I hate these chickens. Hate that one the most. Roger, don't be like that. I was gonna say timeline-wise, maybe it's a problem, but I guess maybe the subplot's running concurrent to the main plot, so I guess you can argue some time has passed. Unfortunately, Roger stole the chickens to use in chicken fights out of spite for Steve ruining their summer with the job. At the hotel, Haley continues to interpret Bill's behavior as playing hard to get, which speaking to my viewers know that never works outside of TV. It just makes the other person think you don't like them or you're an a-hole or both. Worse yet, Haley turns out to be a bigger freak than her mother, that's even possible, wanting to invite the waitress to a freeway to do all kinds of dirty stuff. Let's ask her. What? Yeah, yeah. You used to watch Sesame Street. 
Well, I used to watch Sesame Street. You know, Fat Nuggets and Fizzy, the two stuffies I use for my panels? Yeah, that's actually inspired by Dorothy from Elmo's World. And I'm fine. <laughs> right? Right, I'm fine. Tell me I'm fine. Speaking of, this kind of reminds me of the kink episode, where we find out Stan is repressed, and when he's told to try and find out what he likes in bed besides missionary, he becomes a weirdo even Francine can't deal with, just because he wants to make up for a lot time and has no clue how to safely test his limits. Haley kind of reminds me of Stan with no inhibition, like if he didn't have that video to get behind that told him that if he pressed his flag then hair would grow on his palms. But anyway, the chicken fight happens and Steve witnesses one of them gruesomely die. Oh Steven, I see you got the flyer. Did you get the five dollars off? The offer was only valid before six! Steve says that if Roger is such a big strong man, then maybe Perhaps they should fight. Steve, no. <laughs> you, you and me, we go way back. I, I could never. Ah! Classic bait and switch. The oldest trick in the book. Beetlejuice taught me well. Make them think they're in control and then spring the trap. They fight. Steve actually does pretty well for a kid like him. Eh, I was that kid. I totally get it. And Roger calls Uncle, apologizing for what he did. I give up. I'm sorry I took your chickens for blood sport. That's a really weird line with no context. The other patrons agree with him that the best thing to do is to free the chickens. It's better than movies to the death or pizza to the death. Unfortunately, the chickens get free and get hit by a car. Meaning, Steve was a stupid, idealistic idiot. At least if they were fighting, there's a chance they could have survived. And if they were chicken nuggets, they could have helped other people survive. Yeah! Like in the movies! <laughs> But with the subplot caped off, we go back to the hotel to wrap up things there, where Stan takes Haley out into the woods. Not the biggest fan of that musical, even if I respect it highly. It's out on Badger Mountain's famous night hikes. Look out, poisonous rock, into the bushes. Ah! Stan sneaks off and calls Francine to tell her of his progress. Francine, I did it, I did it. I ditched Haley in the woods and left her for dead. We won't have to worry about her anymore. Stan, she's our daughter. But they're like right next to the hotel. Couldn't Haley just walk back or find somebody? The doy, Stan. The doy. Francine implores Stan to go back because after all, we need that resolution. Bill? Bill? Over here. Back in the woods, Haley says that she's upset that her father never says he loves her. I... You can't say it, can you? Ugh, you're just like my dad. What? What, what do you mean? My dad never says he loves me. But you know he does, right? So she tried to regain that love with a man who looks exactly like her father and who she gets to bone and kiss? Jesus Christ, you're really like your dad. Maybe you really are his daughter. Stan says, as Bill, that deep down he does care about Haley. He just doesn't know how to openly show it. In fact, Haley is his good luck charm whenever he goes on missions because his main objective is to come back to her. You know, when you were a little girl, he'd sneak into your room every night and put a hard candy in your mouth so you'd have sweet dreams. Really? Yeah. Cute, but wouldn't she choke? Feeling better, Haley tries to call Stan and apologize, which would blow his cover. So he does the impossible. Strangely enough, Haley doesn't rampage, which honestly, I think this could have been a good ending. Oh. Okay. Aren't you... aren't you gonna freak out and go on a rampage? No, I guess not. Haley could realize maybe her rampaging is tied to her father not loving her. Like maybe the reason she always gets upset when she's broken up with is she thinks, my dad was right, nobody's gonna like me. Which is kind of gross, but hey, so is the episode. Or maybe she could reveal that she knew that was Stan the whole time. And it helps her calm down, I don't know. Too bad that Stan is found out and he doesn't explain what happened to Bill. Which is pretty critical, Stan. Oh. My. God. Are you kidding me? Um. Um. Oh. Uh, I love you, honey. I said it. See? Now, depending on how you watch the episode, this could be the ending. But it might not be if you watch the episode on Hulu or sometimes DVD. This is the real ending. Haley, wait. I, I can explain. I, I had a good reason. Oh, you grabbed some matches from the hotel. <laughs> Thank you.
Well, funny, you have to wonder, why was it cut? See, around the time the episode aired, there was a string of forest fires affecting places like California. So as to not make light of what was a tragic current event, Fox decided not to air the ending. But unfortunately, it doesn't air in syndication either. Which I guess I should point out considering my review of Partial Charms of Endearment, with many of you saying that while it never aired on American television, you sometimes were able to find it on streaming. I have occasionally seen the true ending in syndication, but I only remember like once or twice. Again, it is uncut on Hulu and DVD, but something like TBS, True TV, Adult Swim, you're probably gonna find the cut version. Nowadays, I'm surprised it isn't aired more. Maybe they're always worried, especially with forest fires being on the rise, along with gender reveal parties. Or hey, maybe they just thought it's funnier to cut it there, but it's still surprising. Anyways, yeah, Haley Smith is 100% like her father, especially in terms of her love life. And it's not surprising. Granted, what do I think of this episode? Well, I think it's hilarious. They fully admit it was gross. The double was an awful dude, so in a way, it kind of clicks. I do think it works because they try to keep the gross out to a minimum. And they make the point that outside of kissing, which yeah, is gross, they could have gone worse and they never did. Plus, it's not Stan, it's just a guy who looks like him. And I made the point that with political decoys, maybe they had plastic surgery or something. Like maybe this is what Bill really looks like. I don't know. Subjectively, maybe it's a little bit better than Stan and his mother, but hey. Granted, I wish they had Haley learn Bill was a jerk because then maybe she wouldn't rampage or learn she shouldn't get angry over an a-hole like him. Or hey, maybe we find out that he was always secretly a jerk to Haley and then it finally clicked in her mind or she knew the whole trip that was her father because Bill had a tell or something like he was left-handed. Plus, there's a huge chance Bill could just come back to Haley and lie. I mean, look at what happened with Francine. But the episode is fine besides that and provides a really good side to Haley we normally don't see. Hypocrisy when it doesn't concern politics. But you only the question is what happened to Bill? Stan says he isn't allowed near the family anymore, but that's still his co-worker. Does he just request a new body double? Does Bill get the worst assignments? I'm just saying, we haven't seen Bill in the TBS era, so who knows? Give me your answers down below and bye! <laughs> the pie is really good. Are you famous for this?